Listen, there's no need for everybody to be so mad. Charlie, come here. I got to show you something, buddy. Just, she's just ticked off at the world. When I walk down to the barn, I get the feeling that's what it's like at uh, uh, Longhorn Lester's, hanging out with Lester, you know, just bah, 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 all day long, all day long, just won't stop. Just always. Bah, 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 bah. Well, what's up, guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and uh, getting a bright and early start on the day today. It's, uh, it's just 8 o'clock right now, and I've actually... Uh, I've actually been on the go since 4.45 this morning, something like that. Got up and went to uh, our early morning CrossFit class, which starts at 5.15. And came home, got cleaned up, going to do some chores because we've got a really good chance of rain today. I, I, I'm not going to hold my breath because it may not happen, but they're calling for a at least decent chance of rain. For, for most of the day and off and on throughout the next several days. So I'm gonna try to do some chores early, get some things done uh, before it rains, hopefully. What's up, Earl? Izzy, what are you doing? What are you doing, Izzy? Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Bear. Morning, RJ. Everyone have a good night. It's nice and cool out here today. Uh, right now it's 68 degrees. 68 degrees, Bear. It feels like fall, doesn't it, buddy? What? What? You gonna give me knuckles today? Huh? Give me knuckles. Look at those guys. Steve. Y'all go somewhere else and act like that. I don't think Fancy likes your games today, Steve. She ain't playing. Listen, y'all are getting Larry all worked up. He don't know how to handle this situation. Charlie, are you reaching through the fence? So the other day I told you guys Charlie had a, the back of his head was looking kind of rough, I guess you'd say. Rough may not be the right word, but uh, I thought it was because he likes to reach his head through the fence. Hey, it's actually not. That's incorrect. It has to do with uh, Madam Turkey here because, so during, you know, throughout the day, usually for about two hours, I will, uh, I'll lock Charlie up in the stall and feed him. Oh, it's getting clustery right here. Everybody's all ganged up on me. Huh, Steve? Anyways, I will, uh... Knuckles? You give me knuckles? Yeah. I'll lock Charlie up and feed him. And, you know, he always likes to reach his head through the fence. And I thought he'd just been trying to reach through and, and rubbing his back of his head, you know, trying to get out of that stall. Until... A couple of days ago, that turkey flew in the pen with Charlie, and they, they're always around each other. But I noticed when Charlie would lower his head, she was pecking at the back of his head. Larry, why are you so fired up, buddy? Huh? So I don't know if I can keep Charlie still long enough to show you guys. But this was from a couple days ago. Charlie... Hey, I got a surprise for you. I do. I want to show you something, and I want to show everybody else something in a minute. But hang on. Calm down. Calm down, Larry. Ouch, that kind of hurt. So what I noticed was this hen turkey was actually pecking at the back of Larry's head. You know, anytime he would lower his head down, I watched her do it. I had a suspicion that might have been what was going on at one time, but I thought, man, there's no way... A bird that big is going to let a small, much smaller bird peck at the back of its head until I saw it. It was you. Huh. Ain't that right, Charlie? You letting that little old turkey hen pick on you? Come on, man. Thanks. Thanks for pushing Larry away, dude. I appreciate it. He's getting a little close. What? 
What? Charlie's pecking at my leg, so you think you need to? Hmm? Anyways, hang on. Charlie, let me, uh, let me run up to the house and get something. I got a surprise for you. Okay? Oh, all right. Hang on. Hang on. I'll be right back, okay? I'll be right back. Look at that. That gum. Charlie is always, like, nibbling at you when you go out there. He doesn't hurt you. He just kind of pecks, and he likes to peck at my ring, anything different colored. Larry, Larry pecks a little harder. Charlie was pecking at the bottom of my shorts when I was sitting there, and uh, Larry was like, what, what are we biting? And he dropped, he brought, he drew blood. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by Beam Dream. Dream is a hot cocoa flavored drink that's clinically proven to help improve sleep. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this about me or not. Um, I don't turn my brain off very well. Uh, 14 years in law enforcement, working shift work, really screwed up my sleep cycle. And my wife says I'm a busybody. I don't do nothing very well. That means I don't stop. My brain, if I'm awake, my brain's going. I don't have a problem falling asleep because I go so much, so hard, so fast, constantly all day. By the time my head hits the pillow, I can go to sleep. My problem is staying asleep. And if I sleep till six, it's unheard of. But usually from three to six, it's tossing and turning. Getting good sleep is important. We all know that. It's gonna, it's gonna make you feel better. It's gonna make your moods better. There's a lot of uh, great benefits to getting a good night's sleep. And well, you know, I don't need to tell you guys that. You know that. At night, about 30 minutes before I go to bed, I'll get me a nice cup of milk, heat it up in the microwave, put a couple scoops of this in here. Like, Dream comes in a couple different flavors, several different flavors, honestly. There's two couple different varieties and a couple different strengths, but I have the uh, non-CBD version. It comes in three flavors, uh, cinnamon cocoa flavor, chocolate peanut butter, and then like a mint chocolate chip, I believe. I haven't had the mint one. I could put a couple scoops of this in here and they, came, they sent me a little frother. <laughs> I feel pretty fancy with the frother. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm just kind of bougie. It's just like a cup of hot chocolate before bed. It's basically a, a four stage process. So stage one, melatonin and magnesium and L-theanine. I think that's how you pronounce that. Help the body drift to sleep. Stage two, the Theanine, theanine, however you pr pronounce it, can help facilitate this stage during uh, which your body transitions to deep sleep and consolidates memory. Stage three, deep sleep. Reishi, which is a, a, a mushroom. I did a little research on it. It's used a lot in Chinese teas and things. And the L-theanine can aid in deep sleep when your body physically repairs itself. And then stage four is the REM sleep, emotional processing. Reishi and melatonin can improve REM sleep during which the body uh, processes emotional memories and learning. Um, but this does have melatonin in it, but it doesn't leave me feeling drowsy and groggy in the morning. And like I said, Dream tastes like hot chocolate. It has no sugar added. It's only 15 calories. It's just, it's really not bad for you at all. So if you're interested in a better night's sleep, I urge you give this beam stuff a try. The Dream, right here, Dream, better night's sleep. Go to their link. Link is in the description box or scan the QR code on the screen. Use code ARMSFAMILY. You're going to save 20%, 20% off. You get an extra 15% plus a free frother. <laughs> I'm telling you, the frother, it just makes me feel uh, bougie. Like, like, I know what I'm doing. But only when you use code ARMSFAMILY, right? Only the hemp-free versions are available for international shipping. No CBD going overseas. And you can pause, skip, or cancel at any time, so there's no risk. Better not sleep, dream. Try it out. Charlie, where'd you go? I got a surprise. Did you go hang out with the Angry Geese Club? You guys are noisy. You turn down the volume. How am I supposed to have a conversation with Charlie with those angry geese just yelling all the time? Hmm? Listen, there's no need for everybody to be so mad. Charlie, come here. I got to show you something, buddy. Charlie, come here. Come get in the video, buddy. Come here. You know you want to. Look. Look. Hey, up here. Look. Look, Charlie. Look. Oh, that's cool. What did you see? I got it. Look at this. Look. 
Charlie got his own t-shirt. Look at that. Yeah, it's a little Jurassic Park is she looking. I know. But our fall launch for our, our AFH merch and do your best merch is, all, is running a little bit behind. Let's move this over here. I got an audience. I'm talking to you guys and them. So our fall launch is running a little bit behind, Charlie. Your shirt should have been out, you know, a few days ago. But we're waiting on a couple more shipments. But I wanted to go ahead and show you guys. Here, you, you guys are worrying me. I wanted to go ahead and show you guys. Uh, DJ may not be real happy with me about announcing one of her t-shirt designs ahead of time. But uh, the Charlie t-shirt has been highly requested. Everyone has been asking for some kind of t-shirt with Charlie on it. And uh, since, Jar since Charlie has that uh, raptor look, you know, the big scary bird, we went with a uh, Jurassic Park theme but apparently charlie's not the raptor as much as uh this little lady are you a raptor huh you sure are curious you're looking at yourself aren't you so what do you think charlie are you excited to have yourself on a t-shirt huh yeah all right now i'm not exactly sure when the charlie t-shirt and the rest of our fall launch for all of our stuff is going to be available but hopefully within the next few days from the time you guys seeing this uh should be pretty soon i hope i'm sorry we didn't do a t-shirt with uh with you on it buddy you got a snotty nose and a smelly beard i, I just don't know that we need to put copper on a t-shirt but there's several designs we're not doing a huge fall launch with all of our merch stuff because we're trying to transition out of our garage into our new merch facility for our christmas launch the goal is to be completely in at least the shop side of the merch building for our christmas launch which will be like november mid-november sometime uh it's going to be a tight squeeze but I think we can do it. We probably won't have the apartment side completely finished. But I think we'll be in the uh, in the shop. Where you at, Larry? I hear you. Oh, it wasn't Larry. It was the hen. Are you coming after me? Hmm? But speaking of the merch building, yesterday we started on the spray foam, the insulation. Is that right, Copper? Well, you hadn't been there. You don't know. But uh, we stopped by yesterday and talked to the company that's doing the spray foam insulation, and they did get a pretty good start. Today is a long-awaited day at the merchandise facility. Um, got a truck here for spray foam insulation. We're going to do, the whole building is going to be spray foam insulated. The walls are going to have uh, two inches of closed cell. The ceiling will have two inches of closed cell. And then on the ceiling, we'll do an extra four inches of open cell. So a lot of spray foam insulation going into the building. It's going to take a couple days to get everything done. They're also going to paint for us. They're going to paint everything from eight feet up black. So all the top of the walls and the ceiling will all be black. And we were talking to the spray foam folks a little while ago, and they said, so you guys do YouTube? And I was like, yeah, a little bit. And they go, he said, well, we've got like, he goes, my wife has like 700,000 followers across all these different platforms just for spray foam stuff. It's called Outlaw Spray Foam. I haven't looked them up yet, but supposedly TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all the places, YouTube, content creators out here <laughs> just doing spray foam stuff. It's actually really cool. It's fun to watch. Hey, earlier today, his suit didn't look near as uh, moist. I bet not. I think he's sweating a little bit. Mm. It's kind of warm in there. 
So as you see, they got a pretty good start on the uh, spray foam insulation in the merch building. That's um, that's a pricey little project. It's it's expensive, but it's one of those things I think it will pay for itself in the end. I'd rather have that building very well built, very well insulated, and uh, done right. Woohoo, RJ! <laughs> RJ got after uh, <laughs> RJ got after the dog out of nowhere. Come here, RJ. What are you doing, buddy? Huh? Why don't you leave Jim all alone? She wasn't doing anything to you. Apparently, RJ is uh, not being overly friendly today. RJ, what's up, buddy? Hmm. You looked awful concerned about something. You being protective? You trying to protect the goats from that little bitty dog? Uh-uh, don't you jump. Nope. Listen, RJ and I have been working on his uh, aggressive nature a little bit. And most days he won't jump on me like that. And the only time RJ will do that is when I'm below his level. As long as I'm standing up, he is never the least bit aggressive. But anytime someone squats down or, you know, shorter than his level, he can get a little bit aggressive. And that's concerning because, you know, we always like to have kids out and let them hang out with animals and see the kids. And I don't want RJ or any of our animals being aggressive like that. So we're working on it. Anyways, back to the uh, merch building. If it doesn't rain today, <clears throat> or if we don't get very much rain, I guess, they... Uh, should get through spraying all of the spray foam on. He said they were going to start about seven this morning, so they should have a pretty good start now, but uh, it's all dependent on the humidity, the relative humidity, the dew point, all those things as to whether or not they can actually spray that foam. So the rains can cause a problem even though it's inside of a building, but if they get much work done today, I'm going to try to go over there and give you guys an update, see where see where they make it today hopefully they get it all sprayed and then either tomorrow or the next day they're going to come back and paint it so the plan is from eight feet and above on the walls and all of the ceiling is going to be painted black kind of that uh industrial look or you know a lot of restaurants do that have exposed ductwork for their air and electrical and all that stuff so we'll see well now wait a minute that that's interesting i just walked out of the barn would you hush please hush goose i just walked out of the haunt the barn i said horn because all i could hear was a goose honking oh my goodness steve how do you live in this madness huh Anyways, I just walked out of the barn, and I heard a turkey gobble, and I was like, wait a minute, that wasn't Larry. That sounded like a really young Jake that doesn't know how to gobble yet. Larry, I thought you were losing your voice, buddy. Or maybe you've been yelling at Goose too much and lost your voice. But it wasn't Larry. So then... I uh, guess I really had no idea that one of those two hens right there was not a hen. <laughs> and you can see who it is. He's a Jake. A Jake is a immature male turkey, by the way. Uh, Larry is a Tom. A mature turkey, male turkey, is called a Tom. Okay. Well, I've never seen that guy raise his tail feathers like that or gobble. Uh, Larry, dude, chill. So, one of those turkeys is the hen that we got with Larry, Linda. Linda's right there on the right. Well, that one is the one remaining baby that we raised, okay, from Larry and Linda when we first got it. We had several babies, but only one survived. Larry? Back up, bro. 
So all this time, I've been thinking we were raising a young hen. And the dude gobbled at me. I can see a little bit of difference in his feathers now that I'm looking at him. But uh, he hasn't started growing a beard. His head looks just like his mom as far as shape and color. His feathers are almost identical, except he's got a little bit of a darker stripe on his tail feathers, which is that stripe on the back of Larry. Yeah. Did you know? Did you know that extra turkey was a boy? Because I didn't. I don't know if I can get him to strut and gobble again. We'll try to catch it on video. With the chaos of all the birds. Oh, bear. Bears. Bears barking, got the geese riled up. No wonder. It's no wonder those two guys right there lay at the back of the pasture all day. I don't blame them. I don't know if I'll be able to get him to strut his stuff again but i'm telling you he was strutting just like this guy's doing and he gobbled <laughs> he gobbled interesting i really wasn't planning on having two tom turkeys around here but uh i guess you get what you get and you don't throw a fit huh jerry i think i can get him to gobble again he won't strut there he goes here he goes you're going to end up finding a new home yes you make everything stressful out here for charlie and i don't like it angry geese what a madhouse we've got around here you know that we've got a madhouse huh charlie Get birds, they said. It'll be fun. I'm telling you, uh, if Houston gets the itch, the urge to start incubating eggs again next spring, uh, don't let me do it. Don't, don't, don't let me allow it. And if we do, if I do allow it, we're selling all the birds. We're selling them. It's chaos at the barn right now. Like those three white geese are angry all the time. Larry's temperamental and wants to be right under your feet. Um, goose just she's just ticked off at the world when i walk down to the barn i get the feeling that's what it's like at uh, uh longhorn lester's hanging out with lester you know just bah, 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 all day long all day long just won't stop just always bah, 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 bah. i'm kidding kind of so for the next part of this video uh what is it ferris you need something i needed a halter and a quick wardrobe change because this is one of our other fall t-shirts that we're going to be launching it's a new donkey poodle ranch t-shirt and i can't be out here messing with the alpacas and not wear a donkey poodle ranch t-shirt phoebe sorry we don't have a phoebe t-shirt well you've been on a t-shirt but not this fall maybe someday maybe someday we'll have a phoebe t-shirt again yeah so my plan is to catch little reba here look there's brie walking away from me as usual being like her mama anyways i'm going to catch little reba oh she didn't like that idea she turned her tail and walked away because she has never technically been weaned off of her mom look at her she's like i'm getting out of here i heard what he said 
Um, technically, she's never been weaned off of Lucy. And I've noticed she's still nursing. And Reba, I'd have to look at the calendar. My wife probably knows off the top of her head when her exact birthday is, but she's close to a year old now. So my plan is to catch her and put her on a halter and take her and put her in one of the stall pins. Now that it's not 100 degrees, it's nice and cool. She won't overheat. And uh, we're going to lock her up away from her mom for the next couple weeks, few weeks. Phoebe, do you want to go too? Do I need to lock you up? Hmm? Are you going to make this difficult? I probably should have brought a bucket of feed to distract these girls so that I can catch Reba. Yeah. But we are definitely um past due on separating reba from lucy <clears throat> she doesn't need to be nursing anymore so we'll lock her up and uh separate her i can't put her in with rj because i don't want him harassing her and trying to breed her that wouldn't be good would it fallon she's way too young for that so hey let go of my rope what are you doing farah where are you going with my halter? Hmm? All right. I got to catch Reba. Are you guys going to let me do it? Come on. Come on. There comes Bree. Hey, Fallon. Get away from my camera. I'm going to trick you into thinking it's time to eat. Come on, girls. Come on, Reba. I may have to get a bucket of feed. Hey, Fallon. Nope. I got Reba. Come on, Reba. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. We don't want to get your mom all stirred up. No. Here. I'm going to put this little sheep and goat halter on you. Fallon, no. Fallon, don't knock the camera over. All right, Reba. <laughs> Move, Fallon. No, 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 Parrot, no. Come on, Reba. Come on, Reba. You got this. Out we go. Leave the don'ts. Oh, you knocked over the camera. Lucy. Your mom's not even affected by it, Reba. Did you know that? Are you going to lay down and try to get out of my halter? Hmm. All right. Let's go to the barn. You'll be all right. Come on. You're good. Reba's not a fan of the, of the halter and the lead rope. Come on. Come on, Reba. I got a surprise for you. You want to make a pit stop and see RJ? Because uh, RJ's really interested. What's up, RJ? You haven't been, uh, well, technically you have been nose to nose through the fence with Reba. But y'all haven't been together in a while, huh? What do you think, Reba? RJ's your brother. We can't be having no promiscuous girl stuff. Because RJ would never be promiscuous. It would have to be Reba, right? Come on. What is it? Hmm. The only other thing is, woo, you get him, RJ. You showing off, buddy? The only other issue is, uh, I am going to be putting Reba in a pen where she will have a fence next to Jerry. So it might get Jerry a little fired up, but it's a tall, hard-sided panel fence, and there's no way Jerry can get to Reba. Ain't that right? Hmm? All right, Reba. We're almost there. Almost there. Don't knock the camera over. Come here. It's going to be your home for a little while. Come on, Reba. A little pressure come on give to the pressure 
Come on. Let's go. In you go. In the stall you go. All right, here, come here. I'll take your halter off. There you go. I'll get you some food and water. You'll be fine. All right, Reba's got food, got water, a stall, and her outside pen. Next thing is, where's Jerry? Jerry, where you at? There's Jerry. Hey, buddy. If you want to see Reba, you're going to have to go all the way around the fence. If you want to make an introduction. She's, uh... Way too young for you, fella. But they both should should not have any issues. That fence is over five feet tall. He can't jump in. She can't jump out. And uh, she's definitely not old enough to be interested in him. But he's curious. All right, well, Reba is officially separated from her mama, and uh, they'll be just fine. She's nursed on her probably way too long. I probably should have weaned her a few months ago, but uh, it'll be good for Lucy. It'll allow her to uh, get back in better condition physically. Uh, we don't have a lot of green grass, <clears throat> but with what little bit of moisture we're getting, you can see there's, there's a little bit more green grass. It's starting to pop up. The fall grasses are starting to pop up, even in my yard. Just with what tiny little bit of rain we've had, these fall grasses are starting to pop up here. And if they're doing this in my uh, dried out, burned up yard, they'll do the same thing in the pasture, huh, Gemma? So, I'm going to get a little bit of work done. Uh, anyways, yeah, Donkey Poodle Ranch. There are, I believe, two other shirts that DJ is still waiting on to arrive before we can launch. So, armsfamilyhomestead.com. Merch will be available soon. Four, I believe she's doing four designs for the fall launch and then Christmas is going to be huge and actually yesterday just yesterday DJ and I had a uh, a business meeting we'll call it with another local farm I'm not going to give you any details because we don't have everything finalized yet but we're trying to partner with another local farm to bring you guys a local southern Oklahoma fresh product to be able to sell to you guys something that's a uh, unique to our area and not very many places around the country so we're hopefully going to have that all lined out and finished and planned and packaging and figure out all that side of the the business stuff to help bring you guys something that you'll enjoy I'm not going to be able to go in here because I don't have a respirator on, but uh, definitely making some progress. Looks like all the walls are done. Coming back in and putting that uh, open cell foam on the ceiling. So it's a lot, it's a lot uh, fluffier foam than the closed cell. I'm not an expert when it comes to spray foam, but just a general generic difference. The closed cell foam is going to be thinner and it's really hard. It actually adds a lot of uh, structure to the building. My shop at home is all in closed cell foam insulation. The open cell is uh, softer. It's not as dense. So when they spray it on, it fluffs up really thick. But the difference is, is when you touch it, you can poke a hole into it. So we're not doing open cell on all the walls and everything because we want that hard foam that's going to 
you know actually add structure to the building plus insulation then that closed cell or the open cell on the ceiling you know gives us more to higher r value when we do the closed cell and then stack that open cell on there with six inches of spray foam insulation obviously you guys know we have a black roof black walls black doors black everywhere that's what dj wanted it looks sharp i'm not gonna lie it looks great the only thing that's not black are the poles we need to paint those and the walkthrough doors haven't been painted yet but uh i think it's gonna look awesome it's gonna work great and hopefully this thing has a a very good uh, r factor r value it's very well insulated and shouldn't have near as high utility bills this that's laying on the ground is that open cell foam it's softer i mean this thing is this whole block here weighs maybe a couple pounds but you can see it's uh it's much softer foam than the hard cell the hard cell stuff is like once it sets up it is solid so i guess he was just adjusting his nozzle and getting everything set up well, that's just trash now but i'm gonna let them do their thing and stay out of their way well made it home from the merch building really couldn't go inside and do anything at all I just even just poking my head in the door the odor whew, need a respirator to go in there right now uh in other news the sun's starting to shine and we have not had any rain today maybe eventually we'll get a rain shower but i'm starting to see more blue sky than i am clouds so anyways well maybe it'll rain someday that's why i have not started planting my food plots yet i know a lot of guys are putting out seed and kind of trying to get ahead of the rain but i, I kind of just don't have the faith that we're going to get enough rain to do a whole lot of good and i want the ground to have a little bit of moisture first so eventually we'll get to plant some food plots for uh, the deer and some you know winter crop for uh for the animals to graze and stuff like that but not today so guys that's all i've got for today thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it you guys have a great day and as always we'll see you on the next video mm -hmm.